Risk Adjustment Clinical Documentation Specificity. Today we're going to be looking at chronic kidney disease. We'll take a look at the diagnosis, the diagnosis specificity needed to assign the appropriate ICD-10 code, and the clinical documentation required to support the ICD-10 code submitted on your claim. The goal for today's content is to obtain a high-level understanding of risk adjustment specific to chronic kidney disease. We'll be utilizing the CMS HCC Medicare Risk Adjustment Model. Information being shared today is in accordance with the ICD-10 coding guidelines, CMS Risk Adjustment Data Validation Guidelines, the American Hospital Association Coding Clinics, and Industry Best Practice Suggestions for Risk Adjustment Success. We hope that you learned one thing today that you didn't know or that wasn't clear about risk adjustment, clinical documentation, and or ICD-10 coding specific to chronic kidney disease. We also hope that we can help you ease the burden of the day-to-day -day documentation requirements by implementing some small changes to get credit for the work that you're already doing. Best practice clinical documentation specificity. Specific to risk adjustment data validation audits, recall it's that one standalone progress note. It's not the medical record in its entirety that's used in an audit. It's the one data service in a single progress note that must validate the ICD-10 diagnosis codes submitted on your claim for risk adjustment data validation. Does the clinical documentation in your progress note meet the CMS meet criteria to support the diagnosis codes in your assessment and assigned on your claim for submission? Recall that CMS acronym MEET means monitor, evaluate, address, and or treat the diagnosis that you're talking about. Let's talk about chronic kidney disease and your clinical documentation. There are 60 ICD-10 diagnosis codes for renal conditions that are categorized into five HCC categories. The five HCCs are arranged hierarchically. Only the highest HCC in each hierarchy impacts the patient's risk score. There is a disease coefficient interaction that's also added for patients that have qualifying renal condition and congestive heart failure. Here's a visual of the renal diseases specific to the CMS HCC model. Within each hierarchy, only the highest severity, lowest HCC number impacts the patient's risk score, even if multiple conditions are present. So going all the way down to the bottom, starting in the orange line with chronic kidney disease stage three, going to CMS HCC 138, then you have chronic kidney disease stage four, CMS HCC 137, then you have chronic kidney disease stage five, CMS HCC 136, which includes end stage renal disease. You have acute renal failure, which is CMS HCC 135, that includes complicated and unspecified acute renal failures. You also have dialysis status, CMS HCC 134, which includes complications uh, of dialysis. For chronic kidney disease, specifically in adults, the normal EGFR is more than 90. EGFR definitely declines with age, even in people without kidney disease. See this chart below for an average estimated EGFR based on age and staging, which is still appropriate. So if I am age 60 to 69, my average GFR should be an 85. If I'm 70 and above, my average EGFR should be 75. A GFR of 60 or higher is in the normal range. A GFR of 60 or below, regardless of age, may mean kidney disease and it would be appropriate to stage as needed. A GFR of 15 or lower may mean kidney failure. Specific to CKD stages, avoid stating CKD without staging it. Um, so if you're going to say that my patient has chronic kidney disease, do your best to include a stage at every case. Early stage kidney disease doesn't usually cause symptoms, but you may order an EGFR test if your patient is at a higher risk of developing kidney disease, such as CKD risk factors, having diabetes, high blood pressure, being overweight, or even a family history of kidney failure. While stage one and stage two chronic kidney disease are not included in the CMS risk adjustment model, they are important when considering other manifestations such as diabetes. So if it's microalbuminuria or nephropathy, can we get it into a specific stage? Two GFRs less than 60 within 12 months 
consider retesting and staging your patients as appropriate. When an EGFR is below 60 for more than three months, this is definitely considered moderate to severe kidney disease. Here on the right, you can see the percent of kidney function, the GFR value, and the stages of the chronic kidney disease, specifically calling out some new staging for stage three. So here we have stage 3A and 3B. 3A meaning mild to moderate loss of kidney function with a GFR from 59 to 45. Stage 3B, moderate to severe loss of kidney function, being a GFR from 44 to 30, and then so on. Stage 4, 29 to 15. Stage 5, less than 15. So again, stage 1 and 2 are not included in the risk adjustment model, but if you can stage that chronic kidney disease, that manifestation may help other diagnoses risk adjust. Specifically when documenting renal conditions and chronic kidney disease, your documentation should always include the status, the specificity, and the treatment plan. So for the status, is it stable or worsening? For the specificity, is it stage 5 CKD versus CKD stage 3A? For renal insufficiency versus renal disease versus end-stage renal disease? Be sure to specify that condition. And then the current treatment plan, whether uh, managed by a nephrologist or whether you're suggesting continuing a low-sodium diet or starting an ACE inhibitor, etc. The status, the specificity, and the treatment plan. Talking about pulling in diagnoses from specialist notes is important. If you have a patient that is seeing a specialist, it is okay to pull that diagnosis from the specialty visit into the active medical problems list of your patient so that you can assess and address that moving forward for awareness. All you have to do is monitor, evaluate, address, or treat, even when managed by nephrology. So the good example of the documentation for CMS risk adjustment data validation would be end-stage renal disease currently on dialysis managed by nephrology. Or another example would be CKD stage 3B, continue a low-sodium diet, follow up in six weeks. So be sure to document and code all renal conditions as appropriate. And again, documentation solely in the problems list or past medical history list is not sufficient to show management, evaluation, assessment, and or treatment of that diagnosis. That CMS acronym MEET, Monitor, Evaluate, Address, Treat, ensure that that diagnosis is included in your progress note documentation and what you're doing to meet it. Regarding chronic kidney disease documentation and coding, you can see the table here on the bottom which alludes to the ICD-10 code and then the ICD-10 description, uh, talking again about that uh, CKD stage 3A and 3B, and then what the GFR is on the right. So specificity, it is important to document the current type, status, and treatment of the condition. The model inclusion, again, calling out the CKD stages 1 and 2 unspecified and unspecified are not included in the risk adjustment model, but may increase other HCCs such as diabetes mellitus when compiled together. CKD and kidney transplant. In the case of a personal history of a kidney transplant, you would always want to include the Z94.0. The presence of CKD post-transplant does not qualify as a complication of the transplant. So if your patient had end-stage renal disease and received a kidney transplant, you would no longer continue to code end-stage renal disease as that is gone away due to the kidney transplant. You would only code it if the new kidney became diseased. And then documentation of stage and or severity of the chronic kidney disease is extremely important. Accurate code assignment is dependent on the provider's documentation. So specifically stage one through five or any corresponding severity, whether you call it mild, moderate, or severe, can be coded. So a good example of documentation would be moderate, stage 3A, chronic kidney disease, which is stable, continual low sodium diet. Just an FYI here with chronic kidney disease and coexisting conditions. ICD-10 presumes a causal relationship when the following are documented within the same encounter. So if I have CKD documented and I have hypertension documented, 
ICD-10 presumes a causal relationship. Also with CKD and diabetes, uh, ICD-10 also presumes a causal relationship. Acute and chronic renal failure. Acute and chronic renal failure are not mutually excuse exclusive. Code both if both are documented. And specifically ESR and CKD documented in the same encounter, you'll want to report only the ESRD. Here on the right, you'll see a table which is specifically from the ICD-10 coding manual that shows exactly how these diagnoses would code out with coexisting uh, conditions where ICD-10 presumes that causal relationship. Some common renal condition coding and documentation opportunities or observations, specifically when doing a data validation audit in regards to clinical documentation, many times we see where there's conflicting documentation. There may be multiple stages of CKD documented in the encounter. Maybe the problems list will have CKD stage three, the assessment will have CKD stage four, and the HPI will have CKD unstaged. So uh, make sure that you have consistent documentation throughout the progress note. Also conflicting documentation, when there's an updated GFR and it's not included in the encounter. So just ensure that the uh, different value for the stage is coded. Omitting documented conditions from claim submission. Ongoing ESRD or dialysis is documented throughout the encounter as a comorbidity, etc. However, it's omitted from the assessment and the encounter for coding claim submission. Lack of supporting documentation for conditions. Condition is simply listed in the assessment without further documentation in the progress note of meet and or the condition is listed merely in a problems list or past medical history, but it's not included throughout the progress note uh, for diagnosis, coding, and submission. And last, lack of specificity in code selection. The specificity of the CKD is not documented in the encounter um, and it's not included on the claim for submission and or CKD and the staging is documented throughout the encounter. However, CKD unspecified gets selected for the claim submission. So just ensure that whatever is documented in that progress note is, is put in the assessment to include on the claim for verification. Recall that term history of when documenting Per the ICD-10 guidelines, personal history of code explains the patient's past medical condition that no longer exists and is no longer receiving any treatment. If you know that the diagnosis is current, even when it's not presenting signs and symptoms and it's a chronic condition, avoid using the term history of. The takeaway today for renal disease coding specific to CKD Looking at the table here on the right, you see the list of the ICD-10 codes, you see a list of the ICD-10 descriptors, and then you see whether or not that diagnosis is included in the CMS-HCC model. Documenting the specific stage of the disease is important to correct code assignment in renal diseases, specifically chronic kidney disease 3A and 3B. Remember, CKD stages 1, 2, and CKD unspecified are not included in the risk adjustment models. Please be specific in your clinical documentation for appropriate code assignment. I wanted to say thank you for your time today. We really appreciate all that you do. And remember, it's the small changes made today that will make a huge impact in the future. Thank you.